All right? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we have this push button switch, right? So the push button switch, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. Um, here we go. This push button switch is nice. I bought it off the internet. I put it in all your kits. And the problem is um, the, the wires on it, um, if you look at yours, look at your black and purple ends of your wires. Do you notice, um, Jared, that um, they're just insulation? There's no wire sticking out, right? Yes. So if we had like a breadboard and I tried to use it, use your your push button with the breadboard, it's not going to fit, <laughs> right? And even if I cram it in there, it's not going to give me a contact because I need to expose those wires. So, um, Jared, today um, I'm going to teach you a really valuable life skill, okay? And this is a skill that you're not born with, you have to learn. No one's born with this. So, But some people are better than others, and if you practice, you can be good. So, Jared, have you ever stripped before? Don't feel embarrassed if you haven't. Okay, a lot of people don't know how to strip. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to strip. And so when, when your parents ask you, what did you do today in distance learning? You know, you could say, Mr. Kaiser, he taught us how to strip. And it's, it, you know, I, and I'm getting the hang of it now. I'm gonna to have to practice some more at home, but he did it over the distance learning. He had the video going and it really helped me. Um, and so we're gonna show you how to do that. So. Uh, Jared, to, to, to be a good stripper, you need more than just experience. Um, you need the right tools. So I'm going to tell you right now that I'm sorry, Jared, I'm not, I didn't send you the right tools. Um, so let me show you what the right tools are. So to strip wires, you need something like this. Okay, it's called a wire stripper. This is really expensive. It costs like $8. So I couldn't include it in your kits. Okay. If you want to go even fancier, I show people how to do it with this. I see other people have one at home. You have one of these guys. Okay. This is an automatic wire stripper. I'd have all of you practice if we were in the classroom. This one's really cool. So when you take my take another one of my classes one year, and then you'll be able to practice with this or get one of your own like this. It's really cool. But we're going to use the cheapo tool that I sent you in your Pulsivo soldering kit, and that is this one. And it's cheapo, but it works. Okay. So you're going to take this. Uh, Jared, do you see that there's like a blade running where I'm pointing at? Yes. And do you see above the blade, there's like little round half circles? So those are all for the different sizes of wire. We have a really small wire, or they call it gauge of wire. We have a we have a um, a gauge wire that's really small diameter. So we're going to use the smallest the smallest hole. So what you're going to do is you're going to take watch what I'm doing. I'm going to take my black wire, and I'm going to I'm going to run it through so it's like in that hole and sticking out like about that much. Okay. So how much are you sticking? How much should you stick out is important. I would say around. A good rule of thumb is about half the size of this blade. So that's roughly half the size of that. So if you do the whole size, it's a little bit too much, but we can always cut it if it's too much. But if you do too little, like if you do just a little bit, you're going to have to strip again. Okay. And um, that's okay because the more you strip, the better you get at it. Yeah. So you're going to do this. And do you see where my thumb is? My thumb is right now. Look where my thumb is. So I'm going to push on that thumb really hard. And what, uh, sorry, not that opens up wrong way. You're going to push here for deeper. Sorry. You're going to push right over the wire really hard such that it's gripping the wire. And if I tug on it, it's the wire's not coming out. So while you're pushing really hard, I want you to pull that wire with all your might out. And hopefully you did it. I did it in one shot, but you know, I've been stripping for years, guys. So some of you are new. I started in high school. My mom showed me how to strip. She was a really good stripper. And she says, if you want to be successful in life, you got to learn how to strip at an early age, okay? I mean, do you really want to be learning how to strip when you're 70? That's embarrassing, okay? So when, when you're young and strong, that's when you learn how to strip. The, who is the best stripper I've ever seen? You're going to be that? I hope so. Oh, you know, when you start young, you will be. When you're 70, you're going to do a really good job stripping. Okay, so if I strip, so I'm going to pause here. Jared, did you get, did, were you successful in stripping? 
wow, that's a really good job. Okay, so um, now if you take your wire and you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna show you, when you plug it in here, it, it, it does plug in, but it kind of bends and it frays and it's really not that good a job. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna, and you could do the purple wire too, for those of you who are listening, you could do both the purple and black wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder this wire to a jumper wire. So I'm gonna solder it to the jumper wire so that I can plug in really easily my switch to the board. But I don't wanna solder it to the little pin here, okay? That's not a good job. You don't wanna do that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our solder wi our wire, remember you got 20 of them, so we're gonna sacrifice one. And when, you're, when you, you, know, you do stripping, sometimes you gotta sacrifice, okay? So we're gonna sacrifice this wire and um, we're gonna cut it first. So the way to cut it, is you, you go to the middle of the wire, so I'm just gonna bend it in half like this, this jumper wire, and then I'm gonna put it over the blade here, and then I'm just gonna, oh, actually, you could do a cut it with this, but I forgot, I gave you a tool that's even better at cutting, the, you know, the gray clippers, you know what I'm talking about, that I put in all your, so that's even easier, so if you have that one, you can just cut it right away, okay? But if you don't have the, these clippers, you could use that, and pull really hard and, and cut it. So now I got my two, um, these guys, right? Okay, so um, um, do, we need, do we need to do some more stripping? What do you think, Jared? Yes. Yes. All right, we're gonna strip. Now we're gonna strip each of these. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do one real, real quick with you. With, oh, I have, do I have one already made? Yeah, I have one already made, so I'm gonna just use that one. And then what you do when you strip, after you strip all your wires, you kind of twist them with your fingers and get them all nice and twisted so that they're not fraying. So I'm gonna do that with both wires. Make sure your soldering iron's on. Heat that bad boy up. Turn up the heat! Okay, that's what we do after we strip. We turn up the heat. All right. I love it. I hope there's some parents in the background listening to me. They're probably emailing the principal right now to see if they can remove their student and uh, fire me from my position. But I. <laughs> Say it's okay. Mr. Kaiser is an expert. Just tell tell him tell her that. It says years of practice. Okay in front of his students and he's taught so many students over 10 years how to strip we're gonna okay now hopefully you've got it all stripped so um it's hard i'm doing it over this copper and it's really hard to see over the cardboard the copper wire so i'm gonna try to put like a uh a, a piece of paper here underneath here so you can see it better it's hard to see okay that might be a little better okay i'm gonna zoom in okay so right now you should have um a, a stripped um a stripped jumper cable and a stripped wire that goes to the switch so you take the ends of that and we're gonna we're gonna do this we're gonna take it and we're gonna kind of wrap it around like that sorry you didn't see it but i kind of like twisted it around like that so they're they're tied together kind of like that huh? oh i almost forgot don't do that yet Tell, take them apart. I forgot one last step, and this is what I always forget. Remember that heat shrink tubing? You're gonna need that. Okay, so this is gonna be the insulation. We used to, in the old days, we used to wrap it up electrical tape, but now we're gonna use this insulation. And um, we're gonna take this uh, insulation, and I think half of it is good enough. So um, I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna use my wire, my clippers here, um, my wire cutters my diagonal wire cutters. I'm gonna cut the insulation in half, roughly, okay? I didn't do that good a job of putting it in half. One's a little bigger than the other, but that's okay. So I'm gonna use the, and then you're gonna put one of those little straw, like heat shrink tubing, things look like a piece of a straw. You're gonna put it in the wire like that, because otherwise, once you solder it, you're not gonna be able to get it on. Then you're gonna twist up the wire. Good thing I caught myself. I have done that before where I soldered it all and I'm like, shoot, I forgot the heat shrink tubing and then I have to unsolder it or cut it and restrip it. And I do like stripping, but sometimes I don't have time for all this stripping. Okay, 
So then, um, now don't put the heat shrink tubing too close to it. Like slide it around down. Okay, Howie, how are you doing, Jared? Are you are you caught up with me? Okay, good. So now this is the next step. You're going to take your soldering iron, okay, and you're going to take with with your right hand if you're right-handed. You're going to like heat up the copper, okay. And some people say heat it from down below, you know, um, so that the solder really flows into it. Sometimes it's hard to do that. And then you're going to add and you're going to like paint. You're going to add some solder. Don't drip the solder on, okay. Just really make sure the copper is heated up. And if you can flip it over the other side and do the other side, make sure your connection is all covered in solder. If you melt a little bit of the insulation by accident, that's okay. You're, I'm off the screen here. That's why you can't see. Okay, so I'm painting it on. Okay, don't put too much. If you have too much on your, on your um, soldering iron, you can clean your soldering iron with your sponge. Um, or your your brass wool, and then uh, kind of like flip it around and make sure there's no like I mean there's a little bit of copper exposed that's that's not the end of the world but your your goal is to try to paint it okay so while I'm painting your mine you can paint yours and let me know if you have questions or Jared let me know when you're done to painting it yikes let me go here. Okay, so make sure really you're heating up the copper. If you don't heat up the copper, the solder won't flow in and join the two wires. So you really want to make sure that copper is heated up. Okay. If you did a good job and if you pull on it lightly, it won't come off anymore because it's now physically connected. But don't pull on too hard. You will be able to break it just like you could break a normal wire. How are we doing? Are we good, Jared? Okay. okay, so your final step is to add the heat shrink tubing. So I'm gonna slide the heat shrink tubing over my solder joints like that, and hopefully it covers all, see, there should be no exposed wire. If there's exposed wire, you, you had them too far apart, you should have put them closer together or you needed a bigger piece of heat shrink tubing. Okay, one of the two. So the whole goal of the heat shrink tubing has to insulate. And if you notice on your switch, um, do you see how the purple and black wires go into the switch? Do you see um, the black thing around them that I'm pointing to? Do you see that, Jared? Yes. That's heat shrink tubing. But how, what is, how does that look different than what you have? Yeah, it's shrunk. So do you have any idea how we're going to shrink our tubing to shrink over and look like that? You're right, heat. So the best way to do it is with a heat gun or otherwise known as a hair dryer. So if you have a hair dryer at home, <laughs> excuse me, um, you could use um, a hair dryer. Or in class, we have special heat guns. They're called heat guns. They're super powerful hair dryers. They'll melt your face off if you use them wrong. So be very careful. We don't have that handy right now, so we're going to use an old trick. They used to use lighters because everyone used to smoke, you know. I guess a lot of strippers back in the day used to smoke. But we're, we're healthier strippers. We don't smoke. We don't have lighters at home, okay. So we're going to use our soldering iron. So you're going to take your soldering iron tip, and then you're going to uh, make sure it's clean. Clean off all the solder on it. Rub it on that steel wheel. Make sure it looks clean as you can be. And then you're gonna quick, you're gonna like go to the ends first, um, and you're gonna like touch the soldering iron over the ends, and you can run it over the whole thing. If you get a little solder on your tubing, that's okay. It's not gonna be a problem. But, and you just kind of run it over. Don't leave it there too long. I don't want you to melt through the heat shrink tube. Kind of run it over. Flip, rotate your 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 a wire around run it over keep make sure you don't hit the other insulation because that'll melt right off okay so only touch the heat shrink tubing and slowly massage the wonderful tube okay 
until it looks like it is snug. How do you know if it's snug? Well, you could test it. Like you can let it cool down for a second. You don't want it to burn, burn your fingers. Um, that should be good enough. And I'm gonna, oh, it's still super hot. So wait a little bit, uh, but it shouldn't slide. And if you touch it, you shouldn't be able to like drag it. Now it should be like a nice seal, okay? And now you made a nice wire that won't give you short circuits because it doesn't have exposed copper and will plug nicely into your, let me zoom out here. So what you should have is uh, a nice wire that will plug in to um, a jumper cable or use a, and um, using male ends of a jumper cable plug into a breadboard. All right. I'm going to pause the video now.